At the end of the Revolutionary War, when the United States secured its independence from Great Britain, the two sides met in Paris to settle the terms. The two sides had to agree on where to put their border. And so it was. The border would go from the northwesternmost point of this perfectly oval-shaped lake and continue in a straight line westward until it met the Mississippi River. And it was finally time to start getting along. Oh, back to war they go. But when all was said and done, it was pretty much a draw. And once again, America and Britain had to enter into peace negotiations. And since America had also recently obtained a huge amount of land from Napoleon, they decided they would need to re-examine the border issue. They decided to go from the northwesternmost point of this lake, as had been previously agreed, down to the 49th parallel. The two sides couldn't quite agree on where it would go next, because both sides claimed the territory beyond the Rockies was theirs. America as a nation had its eyes heavily fixated on all that juicy land out west. Some believed it was a destiny given to them by God himself to multiply and spread across the continent. But America wasn't the only one interested in controlling the western territories. The British were also eager to control the land out west and secure that region's valuable resources. The line should keep going straight. No, we need this river so we can keep scalping beavers. Both sides simply agreed that for now, they would jointly occupy the Northwestern Territory. And one man living here, who felt the territory should be British, was James Douglas, the Hudson's Bay Company's no-nonsense chief factor at Fort Vancouver. Problem for men like Douglas was that many Americans had already begun streaming up the Oregon Trail. By the thousands, they were pouring into the Oregon Territory in search of land to settle and farm. Peter Douglas and the other Hudson's Bay traders at Fort Vancouver were ordered to relocate north to a new base of operations. And suddenly, the whole joint occupation deal was being called into question. Fiery language from U.S. Senators declared that American rifles would annihilate the Hudson's Bay Company in Oregon. And America even gave Britain notice that it was pulling out of the Joint Occupation Agreement. Fine. You wanted a straight line? There. There's your straight line. Finally, the issue of the Northwest border had been solved. Enhance. Perfect. Which channel is the treaty referring to? And therefore, who owns these islands? The British insisted that the channel intended by the treaty was the Rosario Strait. The Americans, on the other hand, argued that the intended channel was the Harrow Strait. And therefore, the islands were American. But thousands of miles away, the people in power simply had more to worry about than some tiny islands in the middle of nowhere. Some islands in the Pacific Northwest are in dispute and could lead to a war with America? Boring. And so, for now, the islands were simply held in dispute. And one man who thought the islands were undeniably British was James Douglas. As far as he was concerned, those islands were not only British, but prime agricultural land. He came up with a plan. If the British settled the islands first, then that would surely secure them for Britain. Douglas sent an Irishman by the name of Charles Griffin, along with some Hawaiian shepherds, to go set up a sheep farm on San Juan Island. One day, in 1854, an American customs collector was sailing around the islands on the outlook for bands of native tribesmen. Hey, hey, stop threatening my sheep! Your sheep? You mean to tell me that you, a British subject, have illegally imported these sheep? You, an American, are currently trespassing on British territory! The Americans felt that they were entitled to collect taxes on the British property. The British, meanwhile, threatened to arrest the Americans. You know, because the island was British. And the two sides were in a standoff. The British then went off to arrest the US customs inspector. But being an American, he emerged from his tent with four pistols and a giant knife. Eventually, raids by northern tribes chased the US officer from the island. But the Americans weren't done yet. Hey, you owe us $80.33 for all this farm stuff you got here. Go suck an egg. So the sheriff and other Whatcom County officials felt they were now well within their rights to seize and auction off Griffin's sheep in order to recoup lost taxes. Then, in a pretty chaotic scene, they worked to tie the rams to their boats. And when Charles Griffin came running to rescue his kidnapped sheep, being Americans, they pulled out guns on him. British complained to the American government, who were shocked to hear what had been going on at their northwest border. James Douglas, still stationed at Fort Victoria, became even more cautious of American encroachment into his territory. The Fraser Canyon Gold Rush attracted a heap of Americans to the region. Some got lucky. Most did not. And of those that didn't, rather than returning all the way home, many simply decided to settle in the area. Around a dozen American settlers moved there. One of them was a man named Lyman Cutler. He didn't want to have to clear a space in the forest to build his home. So he said, eh, I'll just build my cabin right in the middle of this British sheep run. I'll just fence in three sides and hope all these British farm animals have a moral compass and respect my property rights. 
Numerous times he had had to chase the pig away from his property. British farm idiot. Keep your stupid pig out of my potatoes. It is up to you to keep your potatoes out of my pig. <laughs> Spuddy? All right, you damn dirty pig. Lyman shot the pig. You swine! Griffin demanded Lyman pay $100 for the loss of the pig, an outrageous sum at the time. Again, they insisted he pay up. And if he didn't, Lyman claimed they threatened to arrest him and take him back to Victoria. Now that's controversial. And it's a controversy that attracted the attention of an American general in charge of the Department of Oregon, one William S. Harney. He hated the British and was out for any opportunity to earn personal glory for himself. Pickett, you and I are going to start a war. An American man shoots a worthless pig on San Juan Island, and the British threaten to arrest him. We get the settlers there to send us a petition, saying they need American troops for protection. The British will find American troops on an island they consider theirs. It's war. Hell, we could even invade Vancouver Island or British Columbia. Pickett took the very controversial and extremely provocative act of landing American troops on disputed territory. When Douglas found out, he was enraged. Were Britain and America really about to go to war over the shooting of a pig? When Captain Hornby got to the island and saw that the American force there was even larger than expected, his concern grew. Pickett hastily moved his camp from its very exposed position to another position, which, as it happened, was also very exposed. So there they were. The British had orders to land. The Americans had orders to prevent their landing. This was it. War over a small island in the middle of nowhere. Hold on. This is stupid. To heck with it. I'm not landing those troops. I'm not going to be the one who starts a war. The rear admiral canceled all of Douglas's orders and instead pursued a policy of not interfering with the Americans until he could contact the British government. And finally, when word made it across the planet, Informing the two governments of the ongoing crisis, everyone was shocked. Harney was beginning to realize the government may not be terribly impressed with his reckless actions. So you're telling me you guys nearly started a war with the strongest naval power in the world over the shooting of a pig? Both sides will maintain a small force on the island for a joint military occupation until our two governments can decide who owns the island and the troops actually got along together. Of course, the islands were still in dispute, and the question of who exactly owned them still had to be answered. That issue, it was finally agreed, would be submitted to international arbitration. The Empire of Germany would decide. They awarded the San Juan Islands to the United States, and on the 25th of November, 1872, the last British troops left the island. And so, there you have it. A dangerous situation that almost brought two great powers to war. And the only casualty of this pig war was, well, just a pig. <laughs>